Hello, hello everyone. Welcome to the Out of the Box Developer. Hello, hello Chila. Hello Pedro. How are you? Uh, fine, thank you. Hello Hugo and hello Pedro. Nice to have you yes. here. <laughs> hey, hello guys. Hello Hugo. Hello Chila. Yeah, it's this. It's hard because it's like in the end of my my work time here, so it's sometimes oh. I we don't end. <laughs> this time so that's you a have problem to shift the context <laughs> yeah so fast yeah but yeah it's not it's really nice to be here i i would love to have a, a to have a great discussion today great um and yeah if you have seen here my background is quite different from usually i had some issues on my light bulb in the room in my conventional room so i had to stay outside of my room i hold <laughs> the all the noise around here uh <laughs> doesn't uh, uh getting <laughs> in trouble with that yeah. i also have a mosquito killer <laughs> on my side so if you hear some splash <laughs> it is because <laughs> i got one one mosquito less <laughs> my, my mosquito killer is a little more uh, <laughs> manual, manual. <laughs> yeah Mine is a. Uh, do, do you know that, Chila? I have this one. <laughs> it's uh -huh. a light. Oh. <laughs> I have Mine this is... red view. <laughs> uh -huh. And whoa, look here. We have also Douglas here. Hello, Douglas. How are you? Howdy, howdy. How's it going? Fine, thanks. We just went live today. Yeah. And, and yeah, we already have a message here from George Tavares. Hey, hello, George. How are you? uh good to have you here and and yeah today we're gonna talk about side project right uh who doesn't have side projects on, on <laughs> uh, at least on their minds <laughs> waiting to be to become something real <laughs> something real to put in, in the paper <laughs> yeah and start to work yeah. on that um so if you are watching us and and you have side projects uh and you want to you wish to uh, share you can you can share a little bit about that and if you have any challenge on making it uh, uh running or putting it into uh into execution yeah share with us what is your biggest challenge on that what you have been uh, uh if you already started what is what is the biggest challenge on finishing it i think i believe that we have lots of uh challenge on both moments right to start mm -hmm. and also to get into the end. And I just see here, uh, Thiago also joined us. Hello, Thiago, how are you? Hello, my friends, I'm great. And how about you? Fine, thanks. Uh, good to have you here today. And well, since you just joined us, let me ask a question for you, Thiago. Do you have a side project running on, on your side? Uh, uh, do, do, do you have any challenges on running side project on your on your end i would ask everyone actually <laughs> yeah not now but uh, i i already have some in in my past but not now good good i also uh, i think i'm in the same in the same uh state as you i have some side projects in the past some i had accomplish it to finish it some never went out of my mind just ideas i i, I started to note stuff but never went into uh, implementation actually uh, and, and some i started but never ended uh, and, and yeah many reasons behind that i think one of the biggest challenge i had was yeah i think george just just mentioned it's much work uh on the current job and and yeah i think i think that's the most uh the killer one right uh, we have some priorities in our in our end and we uh it's quite difficult to balance it or sometimes it's, uh, the priority changes and the purpose behind the uh the project uh the time to market of that project <laughs> become become uh outdated at least for me and i think that's that's one very common uh, challenge for most. Yeah, Douglas, you 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 made I, some faith that you want to add something. Yeah, go ahead. I think I think <laughs> it it depends, right? So, 
you know, the thing is, is that it depends on, you know, the motivation behind the project, right? If it's something that, that it's torturing you every day, like there's a thing that you have to do every day and you don't want to do that thing anymore and you could write a piece of software that alleviates all the pain, then nothing will stop you from writing it or for creating it and deploying it somewhere. Now, the target, the target of it is also important. If you're the target, then you don't have to actually do a lot of like the production ready, you know, stuff that you have to do to get it ready. Just get it deployed somewhere, you know, put it on a little virtual machine on your computer and then, you know, it's, it, it just can run into this little Docker container forever. And, and, and you can just do whatever you need to do to make it work, right? But if you're going to make it something that, that you're going to put out to the public, then, you know, that's probably the biggest intimidation of it all, which is getting authorization, authentication, password storage, you know, and getting deployment somewhere where it's secured. And you think about all this stuff and then you go, hey, you know what? Not that important. And then you move on. Like you, your, your boss calls you and mm -hmm. goes, hey, there's a fire over here. You need to come put out. Come on, let's go. And then you forget all about what you were doing. Um, that's probably where a lot of that comes into play. Yes, I, I, I agree with you. And But I think uh, even for those small things uh, that is, uh that need to do some um if, even if it's it doesn't embrace a lot of concerns uh, uh going to public or stuff like that uh yeah. in the very beginning i had a lot of difficulties to get started maybe to get uh, uh, uh or when i start i i get it uh put it Put it on the side. <laughs> I, I keep it on on side and never finish it. I, 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 I'm, I'm not, I'm not sure if everyone have this kind of uh, of challenge when, even when it is a small scope uh, project. Well, and, and, everything yeah, seems right. like it's a small scope until you actually start trying to work on it. <laughs> yeah, and then, and then the scope just goes. <laughs> You know, because what about this? What about this? What about this? What about this? You got to hold the whole universe mm. in your head as you're trying to actually mm. codify something that was. So, so let's let's uh, think about this for a minute. When you get an idea that busts out of nowhere, it's probably coming through your right brain, right? It's probably coming through the more creative right brain side, the artist side, right? Mm -hmm. But then. Then what happens is you got to actually like interact with the uh, with with the universe here and create that thing. So then the left side of the brain has to start actually doing some work on it. And when it starts doing it, that's when it's like, you know, it gets it gets caught up. So one of the challenges that I deal with or I've had to deal with, even with projects at work, is if I'm given a blank slate to work with, it's so hard from a blank slate. You know, that's the, the, the empty page of the writer. You got the whole universe in your brain. How do you communicate it out to mm. someone in this serial fashion, writing it out? And even with programming, we have this idea of how everything should work. How do we get it to where it's in the code? And that's actually part of the art form too. Um, I was realizing something the other day. I don't know if any of y'all have ever done this before, but I was fixing a problem with some authentication in, in that HTMX stack that we talked about some episodes ago. And um, I actually fixed three bugs at once. Like I just kept seeing things and then I'm like, it just uh, kept working on stuff and everything came together in the end with it all fixed. And uh, that's a different way of working on stuff. Cause it's not like I would really recommend doing it that way. Um, but it, it it worked out it worked out really well. So that's the whole thing is that like trying to get this this grand idea that comes up out into the universe, and I say that out into your computer in code mm -hmm. is is extremely challenging. So I guess the techniques that we would need to talk about is how could you take a side project that you don't have a product owner talking to the users, you don't have project managers, you don't have a team lead, you're doing all of it with a conversation in your own head between, mm -hmm. <laughs> with 
between the, the part of it that had the idea and the part that's got to go implement it. And how do you how do you knock it down to a point where you can actually um, uh, get that thing out into code? And I, I will give you my thought on this and then I'm going to let it go. It's actually don't care. Don't try to get everything right. Get that core concept and get some code written around the core concept to just get something working. And then when you have that code working, then you can look at it and see, okay, I know how all the pieces can go together now. And then you can actually build it up into, into a set of features, which I'm still having a challenge with. I've actually, one of the side projects I've got, I've got all the individual pieces written in different places. I'm having trouble getting it all to come together in that in that one uh, in that one place. That that's interesting oh, point. Yeah, go ahead, someone. Go ahead. I, I can go next. Oh, okay. <laughs> but I, I I would add uh, interesting thought, uh, Douglas. I when I want to put something out, I usually try to share with someone the idea and try to convert that to spit it out but i oh it is also challenging for me to find a person to uh, that you can uh you can trust some idea that is not really well defined on your mind right. and you are not really uh prepared to actually <laughs> put it out uh, uh yeah. there, the, 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 the other side have to be need to be patient <laughs> to hear and, and and trying to understand you and it works very well when i do do, do some session with my psychologist so because uh she's he, yeah, she's I, there to hear you and and you you paid. spit out they were paid and, to listen yes, to you yes you paid for yeah. that exactly <laughs> so so it works really well because i don't have to uh, I, I, I spit out uh, all unstructured words and, 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 and she does structure for me and it works really well. But uh, I know that in, a, uh, in, in outside this context, it is uh, challenging to have someone to actually share these ideas. Uh, I, I see, I see, I see some, uh, some, uh, some, some comments here, Manuel, just, yeah. just, Mentioned today, I usually talk about ideas with my teachers on Cambly. <laughs> Good, uh, Cambly. Cambly yeah. is a, a a platform. A platform for is for studying English. Oh, good. <laughs> that's that's <Yeah>. great. <laughs> so you you can like you can like a, a sign with one a teacher and and you say okay, <laughs> let me talk. Let, let let us talk about what in one hour. <laughs> Half an hour. That that that's creative, man. <laughs> yeah, and then you can speak English, train your English, and speak about your ideas. <laughs> your side project Get your idea ideas. out through. <laughs> yeah. Talk about multiple layers. That's yeah, a, multiple yeah. layers of. Uh, they they <laughs> use them. <laughs> yeah. It's like the Douglas example of fixing three bugs in at once at one time. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah. I, I don't even know how that really happened. It's just like I kept seeing things that, oh, that actually could be a problem. And I would kind of modify it. And then I'm like, and so I just was going in there, like as I was going through the engine and going, oh, that's a little loose, you know, and, and just, you know, keep going through as I was as I was finding things. And then I found the main thing I came in there to fix and I fixed it. And then when it was all said and done and I went through all my testing, everything checked out and I just walked away and that was <laughs> three bugs fixed and and, you know, and I'm like, wow, I wonder how this ever worked at all. <laughs> a joyful, That's actually a joyful going to day. show you, though, you <laughs> might think that people are using this in production. They were using it in production and like they would report like maybe 5% of the time something weird with the authentication system would occur. Um, but there was always a way around it. And, and so like my manager said, Hey, can you just like take a look and see if you see anything? And I had an idea as to what it could be. And I jumped in there and then wound up fixing three things at once. And like all of those things could actually have caused the problems that, that they were, uh, that they were reporting and everything's a lot more solid now. Um, yeah, it's, it, I won't go, I won't bore you with the details. It was just kind of fun when I realized I just fixed <laughs> three bugs at once. What? <laughs> yeah. I see. Yeah. Uh, 
Uh, go ahead, uh, Thiago. Yep. Oh, oh sorry, Pedro. Go ahead, Pedro. No problem. No, I, I was talking about that. We get, I, I'm not having uh, my I, my side project currently is a uh, at the a, my, a mentorship program, right? And uh, of course, when you do these kind of things, you have other stuff like uh, writing, blogging, and um, using the uh, uh, sending mails and change, sending stuff to the social media, and we have lots of stuff, and uh, and we ended up do not doing that like a lot because it everything takes time, right? And then in uh, uh, using uh, then I, I I actually get to a to a point of automation where I can where it's very easy to me now to write something in the blog and then well, the thing that needs to go to a, to the newsletter to go to the newsletter, the thing that needs to go to the social media to go to social media, you know, <laughs> like uh, uh, in a way that it's, uh, uh, it, it, that now it's easily automated, you know, but, uh, and, and in this case, I didn't work any, I didn't use any code, so it's just, uh, no code tools and integration and so um, I think most of this is small things we have sometimes need to do for ourselves it's, we can have we can find like uh, integration or integration tools that we can use so yeah <laughs> so, uh, I don't know if it's can consider it can be considered a side project but yeah it's <laughs> I, yeah, I think I, I, uh, for me at least, uh, side project doesn't mean only coding project. Uh, I think any project that you want to achieve to make it uh, running on your on your uh, outside your formal uh, traditional work uh, uh, that you want to be uh, making it uh, possible. Uh, and 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 we actually bring this discussion. Uh, let me just redo the question here for our audience. I ask it about if you have uh, any side project or or any idea of side project. What is your biggest challenge to get started on these side project or finish them? Uh, because we are discussing other day last week actually, and we. It is quite a common challenge, right? It is quite a common problem we have. We always have some, oh, brilliant ideas that we, or we have some challenge to put it in practice, or we have some challenge to, we already started, but we never finish it. And and one thing that we are discussing, actually, it is uh, with the uh, accessibility of those AI tools, it, it will actually change it is actually a game changer for this side project. We're gonna be able to make it more uh, easier to achieve that, even to start or finish those projects. Uh, yeah. uh, we are using some stuff already. We do. What is the status now? What we are using now, or what we can use now, and what we can be using in the future, in the near future, because all these AI stuff. Uh, I, I'm. I'm. Well, every week I'm reading stuff, new stuff re becoming accessible for us, and it's uh, fascinating. <laughs> and and uh, uh, so, so that was the point here. Uh, uh, the, the big discussion that we uh, would like to, to share here. Well, I was gonna Go I was gonna jump into that next, which is that mm -hmm. when you said, you know, you know, my therapist or my psychologist is <laughs> uh, is paid to listen to me. Well, you can actually pay ChatGPT to do that listening too, and you can share an idea with it. And the interesting thing about it is if you have access to GPT-4 or you have access, Gemini came out from, from Google and it's actually really good. I've been experimenting with it. So Gemini is actually really good too. There's a, there's a little bit of a minute difference between the two and I'll describe that in a second. But you could tell it your idea. You could sit there and talk to it and 
it'll actually start to break down things that you need to go do to make this work. What I haven't tried to do yet is tell it, hey, don't act like I'm going to production with this. Just like I'm making a toy project, a proof of concept to see if this thing will work. What is the minimum that I need to implement? And I kind of gone in that direction a little bit, but it's really interesting. You tell it you don't need a lot of code, but you want to actually implement functionality. It, it, it will start to generate like, code that might answer the question as to how I can do this. And I, I'm i more leaning toward using it to quickly generate proof of concepts and you know fully integrated proof of concepts. And the magical part is you should be able to take that proof of concept code, feed it in there and say, make it production ready. That's, that's one that's, problem that I, would have, be, that I, would I haven't be tried yet. Yeah. Yeah. And, and, and the, the main thing, though, and this is what I want people to pay attention to here, is there's two distinctions between ChatGPT and um, uh, Gemini. Gemini. The two distinctions mm -hmm. are that I, okay, well, if you have a team account with ChatGPT, which I do, because I put, I basically have an account now for me and my wife, so she can use ChatGPT on household or whatever other projects that she's got, and she wants to talk to it about stuff you know, and see what, what knowledge is out there on it from chat, chat GPT side of things. She can do that. And then, you know, but the cool thing about it is if you have a team account, they do not use your chats in training. Gemini says, we will review all your stuff. So if you go look at Gemini, it says, we will review all your chats. And so if you are talking about stuff, you don't want them to review don't put that in there. So Gemini is really not a great one for that, but ChatGPT team accounts are a good one for working on ideas and talking mm -hmm. about stuff. I've even experimented with throwing some transcripts in there and its window is evidently large enough to handle, you know, uh, a decently sized conversation transcript uh, in there to, to go through and like pull main points out of the entire conversation to do's and, all, all of that kind of stuff. So uh, if you were having a conversation about your project and you take your, your, if you happen to have a transcript of that conversation that you were having, you could put it into chat GPT and it would start to put project plans together for you. That's all that, that's advanced, advanced feature. I haven't tried. I, I have the GPT for access and, and yeah, uh, it is really uh, amazing to, get feedbacks and uh and discussing this with the gpt4 they uh, it is indeed uh really good to help me structure things still don't speak things uh randomly like i do with my psychologist but i believe that at some point it will be so easy to uh to to interact with it that can actually uh, become a good um good tool to help yeah. me structure uh, the ideas. Uh, it is already really good, um, but still not talk with it, with it <laughs> maybe. Uh, near, uh, in the, uh, uh, I, I think they will release. <laughs> in the near future, we're gonna be talking, not, not typing anymore <laughs> with those. You can already talk. So hey, well, yeah, on, we can already talk. On the phone right? app, the mobile app, you can hit a button and actually oh, just yeah, have a voice true. conversation with it. I haven't on the phone tried app. it yet. That's true. Yeah, from the app, we can talk. But uh, 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 Douglas, uh, uh, do you think that using ChatGPT is better than using Copilot when you are like when you are on the code already? Ah, that's actually a really interesting question. So, I, I I've used Copilot and I've used GPT four at the same time. Copilot is cool when you are in the code and you need to think about stuff going on in the code. Um, GPT-4 is like when you're trying to do like holistic, I, I'm, I'm putting a design together. I want to, is this even possible? Am I forgetting anything? You know, and it will, you know, it, it'll come back through and say, you know, your idea sounds very sound, but you know, maybe you need to think about this, this, and this, and this. So it, it will actually give you that kind of feedback. Copilot mm -hmm. is not necessarily yeah. meant for that job, but it's gotten so much better 
Like I can literally tell it in inside my code, write a comment with a question in it and it'll throw an answer out right below the comment question. So it does mm -hmm. do some interesting things, but it's not exactly that. So I find that using, I have GPT open and then Copilot is doing stuff for me inside the code editor as I'm doing stuff. Now this is for my side project. You know, remember that, that if you work for a large corporation like I do, uh, they're going to let let you just keep operating with your hands tied behind your back because they're not going to let you use these tools. I'm like, I could write code so much faster. I'd be done already if I had Copilot on my, you know, in my editor at work. Mm -hmm. But nope, we're not doing yeah. that. Um, but what I have done, and this is, you know, and I, I will say that in a very general way, sometimes without going into any detail, that's an important aspect of this, I will put a musing out there. Hey, I'm thinking about this kind of project. Um, and this is the, this is something I'm, I'm like toying with right now. So very abstract general ideas. Uh, what are your thoughts? And it will actually give you some thoughts I need to think about for like even stuff I'm working on at work without putting any IP in there whatsoever. So you just like, I'm trying to work through this thing and it will, it'll, maybe it'll be the little, the, the little bit that pushes you forward. Right. And, and so not exactly with my hands tied, but maybe one hand tied behind my back now. Maybe that's what it's more like is one hand tied behind my back instead of two. Mm -hmm. Sure. But, so, so, so in terms so you were talking about side project here. So uh, to, yeah. do you think we can use ChatGPT and Copilot or do you still have another, another AIs you're using? For well, for your... side projects, absolutely, man. I mean, you use use everything you've got, right? Um, again, like I said, Copilot really good for inside the code. Like, look at this code. Tell me what I need to do to make sure that it's you know, am I forgetting to do any error catching? Is there some kind of error that I have not like thought about? And it can give you that kind of answer. Um, you, you're writing, you're trying to get like an algorithm out of your head and you just kind of tell it what you're trying to do and maybe even give it some, some, you know, maybe an algorithm to, to kind of mingle with what you've got. And it can actually take the surrounding code and mingle an algorithm. You know, it can, it can integrate with an algorithm and then write the code for that algorithm out there. So if you know about the algorithm, then you can actually get ChatGPT to give you an example, not ChatGPT, Copilot to actually write the code within your code editor that takes your surrounding code into account with said algorithm. What? Oh. Transformation code. I love it for transformation code. You give it what you're starting with and tell it what it needs to end with and it'll write the transformation code. No more mapping code. I was thinking about uh, and and besides, uh, I think I think it's quite, quite connected to what Pedro uh, mentioned here. Besides uh, ChatGPT and Copilot, there is quite popular uh, solutions uh, we have access. Uh, are, are you everyone here? Are, are you using um, any any different uh, solution for this? Um, for to help us on productivity i've been i've been quite in touch with perplexity.ai i i have been i i have better structure than chat gpt uh, sometimes it's not every time so i i have to shift between them all, all the times if if one give better structure than another i will i, I answer the same question for both uh, and and have been an interesting uh, output from that. Uh, I don't know if you, uh, anyone here, have been using anything different or any of those plugins that ChatGPT allows us to to add on 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 the sidebar. I have an answer, but if it, <laughs> I'm gonna let anyone else answer first before I do, <laughs> for those that. Uh, never uh, heard about perplexity. I've been well. Perplexity. I was going to say that that I would like to hear your thoughts on on perplexity because I've not I've not actually used it. Um, but the the interesting thing that you said about like other, um, you know, other LLMs that might be out there. I do run some LLMs locally. 
Mm-hmm. Um, I have uh, oh, cool. I have a couple of them. There's a really cool project if you don't mind uh, going into the terminal called Olama, Olama and yeah. it will it will let you it, like it's just like Docker. You know, you're pulling a Docker container down. You can pull LLMs down and run them if you have the hardware to do it. It it like on my <laughs> my right. M1, uh, it knows how to run it on metal, uh, which is the GPU. Um, the other one that I use is LM Studio which is a way better. Like if you want a user interface, get go, just, just go for LM studio right off the bat. Cause it, um, it will let you, uh, you know, go pull models from, I believe you have a hugging face URL and you can pull models in that way and it'll download it and knows how to run it on the kind of hardware that you've got available. If you have a GPU, a CPU or any of that, and then it creates the chat interface kind of like chat GPT, uh, and it saves your chats and all that happy stuff. So it's really it's really cool for doing it. But I'm going to tell you something. When I'm in the thick of it and I need to get some stuff done, I don't want to wait for the machine to process the tokens for it to go through the LLM and, and start spitting it out. And at this point, unless I want to start up a... Um, you know, a, a VM in the cloud somewhere with a GPU, which is really expensive, I can just pay you know, 60 bucks a month for that team account from chat GP, uh, from, from open AI and use chat GPT four. And that one gives me a hundred messages every three hours to GPT four, which pretty much means I can just sit and talk to it all day long. If I want to, uh, it's actually a lot, you get a lot more done. The other is really cool because here's the thing to think about. If you have a model on your machine, you have all the knowledge all of human knowledge sitting in that model on your computer. And if you have one that's uncensored, if you ever needed to do some stuff that, 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 you know, let's say we lost everything and you can get your computer up and running again, you might be able to get enough information out of there to start like start society over again. So, you know, just, just a little <laughs> bit of that about that. having <laughs> models. There's a, there's a YouTuber that actually talked about like his project to, to preserve a, a model by like even getting a Faraday bag in case an EMP occurred that, that would save like, you know, the computer and the, you know, <laughs> and the, and the drive and all of that stuff. So, I mean, there's a lot to think about out there, but just for trying to get some work done, man, I would go to, I'd go to Gemini if you don't mind them like reading all your stuff and, uh, uh, or I, Gemini is really good though. That's the hard part is it's so good. It's fast. It's, I think it's faster than, um, than, than chat GPT. And it puts a lot of thought into what it's saying. Um, mm-hmm. and then, and then the other part is, is the, uh, um, you know, chat GPT itself. It's just fast. I mean, I could throw, I threw an entire hour long transcript into it and like in almost in, like, 10 seconds it started telling me things where if you, I tried it on my computer and I've got 64 gigs of RAM. I can load the whole thing up. I can load most of these models, you know, that are running like a, you know, quantized a little bit. Right. But I can load most of these models up and I've got, you know, it just sits there for five minutes trying to think about it. And I'm like, no, that's just, it's, this isn't going to work. So I'm going to go use this thing that they've, I'm paying for, and they've got so much GPU, my brain's swimming thinking about it. Mm-hmm. So, yeah. Um, yeah. Just to get, just to share with people here, uh, you mentioned it about, uh, I shared Olama, and you mentioned at LM Studio. It is a- Yeah, LM Studio. Let me get, get, let me get you the link for that. Is, if it's lmstudio.ai, I, I got here. Yeah, I think I think that's it. Okay. Yeah, that's it. That's it. That's exactly the thing. LM Studio AI. Dot AI. And it is a and it it is the idea behind it. It, it is the same as Olama, uh, but has uh, an interface. Yes. Okay. Yeah. Good. I mean, Olama's cool because, and I think that maybe this will do it too. But Olama actually has a web server running underneath the cover, so that you can actually point your code. Like if you're using LangChain or something, it tries to to uh, mm-hmm. maintain that ability layer with the OpenAI uh, API calls, and so you can actually point it directly at your, you know, the URL at your local running against the instance and it will handle scheduling and all that stuff too. So if you throw two requests at it at the same time or two different models, it'll actually 
you know, uh, queue them up and unload models and reload and load other models in as, you know, and, and try to process everything in time. So it, it does that. I can't remember if LM Studio does that because I've not used LM Studio to do that. But I know Olama, Olama has some interesting functionality as far as that's concerned. Yeah, cool. Cool stuff. I, cool. I tried Olama, but just experimenting. Go ahead. Someone. Uh, Pedro? Uh, I don't know. So someone would ask something? Oh, I was, I was thinking that, yeah. So, but uh, uh, are you using that to create your side project? So you started, the you're GPT. creating your AI side project, right? Yeah. That's the idea. Yeah. So, yeah. Not yeah, the I, I, one. Actually, yeah. What a, well, in terms of uh, not, now, not thinking on coding at least, and in my case, for example, uh, as far as I said, right? Uh, I'm using ChatGPT to the same. I got a trans. I, for example, I have a video, and I got it. I create a video. I got a transcript, the old transcript of the video. I put in there, and then I ask the the ChatGPT to create, for example, uh, a newsletter talking like me about that stuff and blah blah blah. And then I can create a newsletter most almost exactly the way I want. And I can can send to the guy say, oh, you have this this new video here, so you can take a look. We are talking about this, this, and that. But so yeah, that's the one thing. Or I can just get that that information and create an article talking about oh, what we did, blah blah, to everything, and I put in the post, blog post, right? It is it's only ChatGPT doing stuff. Yep. But as soon as I create this, this is my what I what I call it my source. Right, I have a source. For example, I had a, 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 inter, a small a small talk with Alpha Donat, right? And I create the video. So I put the video there in YouTube. I got the transcript, right? It's easy to get the transcript from YouTube. So yep. uh, uh, there are lots of ways to do it. I do. I I have a plugin that I can just download the transcript, right? Which it's plugin? Something. Yeah, I have one here. I just do it the hard way. I go in and like I, I select I select the entire transcript, hit control uh, command C and then command V into a text editor and 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 I do some work yeah. on it. But if you got a plugin I just that you trust, I would love to see it. Yeah, it works. I have this uh oh, the, what the name of this guy? YouTube summary. YouTube summary. I have the link here. Glasp. It, 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 I just I use that just for downloading because it it it's I think it it's exactly calls the YouTube API. Oh, give me the transcript here. It might just be able to go into the go into the page and grab it from from the the div that it sits in in the page. Um, you know that there, that may. There is a word. There's a way to do that as well. But it, the, the, the goodness is when we get all the stuff and then you can use it anywhere, right? Yep. So uh, in my, uh, what, what I, this is good for me for, because when, as soon as I have the text this, from the source of, of, the, of the, the, the content I'm creating, man, I can do anything. Uh, then I put, I can put any, everything inside the blog and then starting automating the other stuff, as I already said, you know, but because I, for example, I create a blog post one of the, the with the content, and then I I go to missing letter. You know, the missing letter, and missing letter has another AI running inside it that is that takes chunks of text, and then it starts creating some uh, headlines to the to this content. Say, oh. You can do that right, 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 right now. You can see more here. And then we have a link, right? But the, uh, there are others, guy, for example, I can ask ChatGPT to create, oh, create a small, uh, a small script for a video, for a voiceover video, for example. And then I go, I have, a, I use another, another AI that's a, that can create uh, a, a small video voice transcript or with just with the, the text talking and then we we have a new video with that 
right? I have two actually. I, I'm using Filmora one. Filmora is working for that as well. Filmora is one uh, 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 one ed- a video editor, and I'm using um, um, what's the name? Yeah, it's TV AI. It works as well. Not the perfect one, not the perfect thing, but it works. It can create like stuff like really fast. Yeah. You, you know, so that that's this this thing. It's Steve AI. Yeah. So when we when we mix these things, even I'm not coding, I'm automating my life. <laughs> right? Yep. Yeah, that's a that's really cool. So another little tip if people want one is that if you uh, you do the transcript deal, uh, you can feed that transcript into GPT-4 and just like, I need the most important pieces of information out of the video, please. And it will, uh, <laughs> you don't have to watch a 30 minute video to get the most important pieces of the video out. If it's like something where people are just talking for, you know, two hours or something hour. like that. Now, yeah might want to watch the video because there might be some context in there that you don't get from those important points. But here's the thing. It will give, it'll whet your appetite. You can actually see, oh, that's kind of actually interesting. Where did they talk about that? Mm-hmm. And, and then you can actually start to uh, uh, go dig into the video more when, if you want to, but you don't waste an entire two hours watching it. Like where did, how do I get my two hours back? Mm-hmm, exactly. Yeah, that's the yeah. point. I'm not so, uh, don't uh, watch videos. I'm just saying talk, talking that, to a video, you. right? Yeah, you can talk to a video, but th- there are some AI that says, "Oh, I, you can talk to a video here." Blah, and if you if you get only the YouTube link and and paste it to ChatGPT or paste it to mm-hmm. to Bing, all this or I tried in Gemini, all this AI they say, "Oh, I'm 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 a Texas based stuff. I cannot do. I cannot." Uh, get yep. I cannot re- see the video for you, but they don't say that. Oh, you can just okay. It, I'm not saying the video. I'm pasting the transcript for you. Just so paste it let's in talk there. about it. Yeah. So let's talk about it. It's the same. I'm- you can also you can also do this. So ChatGPT with the um, uh, code. I think it's code interpreter. What you can do is is be able to put it into a text file. And upload the text file and ask a question. You can ask a question of the file that you upload it to. I like more if I can if the context window has enough space in it to just paste the entire transcript into the the window because then I know that it's taking account of everything uh, and and not like dropping some of it, doing like a a chunked uh, embedding and vector search on it first before giving me the information. Um, yeah, so. Uh, just a little bit, just a little bit more there in case anyone's interested, but absolutely. Like we talked about, it can help with coding side projects. It can help with mentorship side projects. It, it, it you know, there's, this just all this stuff going on there. And I guess that, that maybe what it kind of boils down to is it will give the software engineer the way to be able to very quickly iterate on ideas, get stuff out there, see what works. And potentially if they ever had to, you could, you could probably put a project together in a week that might've taken six months to test it, to see if people will pay for it or not. I was, I was exactly thinking on that point. And let me just say hello. I see Aisha. Hello, Aisha. Uh, Good to have you here. Thanks for joining us. And uh, well, we are discussing about lots of tools uh, <laughs> from AI that can help us. But on the other side, I believe that to get into that point also uh, took a lot of time, right? Uh, I believe that Pedro, uh, when you create your pipeline of content cre- uh, content uh, processing and, and creation of the transcript and so, I know that now that it's automated, it's all, all good, but does it changes too much from what people uh, like George Tavares in the very beginning said about, oh, too much uh, work here on the current job to uh, there are no time for any side project. I know that it makes lots of things accessible for us, like like Douglas said, uh, for a developer, for engineer to get all those things to uh, 
to promote the content, to uh, make it uh, uh, available, and, and even to create the video cuts. That is uh, small. It is a small task, but actually, you have to watch yeah. and get the right, the right cut, and then, then it's... <laughs> and I still don't have this, right? This oh, is yeah. something that I still don't have it. I think I, I, this is something we... I, I, I'm, 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 oh, I'm looking for. Sure, yeah, yeah. There is some that, that can cut, like, small pieces, good pieces of, of, of the video. Like, not, not only cut, but say, oh, Find good pieces for me, <laughs> right? But uh, 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 of yeah. course, it can do like using the video, but it can do using the text. Mm -hmm. Too, yeah. But my yeah. point I is, I don't know how, how, the... how to do that, but yeah. But but my point is, does the work just move it from doing that stuff and to learn AI tools to do it for you? Does the what do you think? No, yeah. no. The problem is. And this is something I've been dealing with in my head a lot lately, is that what does the future look like for software engineers? I do not think that you can ask ChatGPT for the foreseeable future to create a full product for you and, you know, not need to understand what it's producing. And so mm. you've got to have the experience you got to have the engineering mind to understand and look at the code that's coming out to know how to put it together. In fact, right now, ChatGPT works better on small little chunks. Help me write this class that does A, B, and C, right? You still, or even, here's the thing. This is actually what I found. You could use ChatGPT to say, I'm creating a project that does this, this, and this, and this. What do you think that entities look like? And then it starts going through there. And then you start, you know, you can have a conversation around what the entities look like. Uh, give me, you know, give me a, you know, in, uh, not in, uh, in hibernate. I'm going in the .NET for, give me a hibernate, uh, you know, spring uh, something or another specification for all of my entities, please. And it will actually print them all out. It'll be good. You, you can use them and go from there, but you're not saying create the whole piece of software. You can have it help you think through some of the problems you might come into, but let me tell you from experience of my own, don't do that because you'll just stay in that, that shape forever. Try to get the minimum, especially if it's a side project, get the minimum feature that you need. Start thinking about what's the minimum amount of code I can put together and have it run that I can use it. And then from there, you know what needs to come next. And if you don't have a complete idea, you can say, here's what I've got. And this is what I think is up next. Chat GPT, do you think I'm missing anything? Do you have anything to add? And that's when the magic starts. You take your software engineering mind and you do software engineering things. And then you converse with this thing like it's a senior architect or a senior engineer right with you that you can just talk to all day long and they don't care. No judgment. <laughs> that's the best part <laughs> no judgment is good no judgment that's, right. that's, a, that's another cultural thing in our field that you when you start asking questions and doing stuff you think someone's judging you and and you know the We're thing about chat GPT you're free just crazy ideas as you can think of and ask it like why, why do you think I shouldn't do that and it you know will say hey that's actually really a unique innovative way of thinking about it or it'll say you know, you might want to think about security and, and these kind of things that you haven't thought about when you said that stuff. And you're like, oh yeah, well, we're going to ignore that for now and go forward. You know, that's the, but it's, it's the thing is that, that you have this resource that has all of knowledge sitting in it and you can use it to help your software engineering brain to put things together faster than you did before but you still have to have the brain. You can't skip the mm -hmm. learning the stuff. Yeah. We can't, we can't skip the learning. And, and, and actually, when we... Oh. Go ahead. Go ahead, Peter. No, actually, when we started, when I started talk, uh, using ChatGPT to do these things, I was not... I didn't like the, the, the answers or something like that. And then when we start doing that in a better way or such... Learning prompt engineering at least a little, right? We have a small, many small books that are out there currently, so you can use it. And, and yeah, 
it, 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 we can we need to to use that as a tool right? right and we know okay this is a tool can help me on this 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 and the other thing i don't like it so i will not use it so let's improve it this other other stuff here and and then it become like a very useful tool right uh and of course we are talking about chat gpt but as we as we are said here we have uh, I, for example i i send here a link uh that is one of the builders that i i i create a builder in chat gpt that is that's built and i put all the all the knowledge we discuss in in our mentorships for uh international career i put many not all but many of the knowledge we which goes there I, i'm trying to improve it, it, it even more and then man this guy turned it on in a, a very useful tool for me because he now knows lots of things that i talk he now knows uh the way i like to to discuss about interviews he now knows mm -hmm. the way i like to do all this kind of thing and this is and now i can i have a partner and i can share with my my mentees as well say oh guys this guy here has I, 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 we are inputting what we're discussing here so we can use that uh to help us in, in any way you're thinking uh, for at least in our case for our main mentorship program so yeah That's a really cool uh, idea uh, yeah, yeah. I, 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 I enjoy it. Of course, we, 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 we may fear, oh, maybe, maybe people will like to talk to ChatGPT, not to, not, to, not to me, but you say, oh, but this is the point, right? If you have someone who not, he can talk to 24 seven, right? No judgment. No judgment. No judgment. Yeah. No fear of judgment. And, and I, of course, I can't do that. <laughs> I can't help my, my mentees like this, right? Mm -hmm. So, yeah, we can, yeah. like, scale this stuff. But this is another stuff. Yeah. Uh, uh, when, I, when I talk about OpenAI, we don't know how to how to monetize these kind of builders we create. That We still don't have a way to do that. I think people are going down the monetization path. I mean, they've got like custom GPTs now that you can put up on the store and charge for. Uh, then on top of that, you've got, there's a bunch of people, actually it's really maddening how many people are creating the, the AI solution to end all problems. Uh, you go, go look at AppSumo and see how many things have the two letters AI in them and you will see what is going on Infinite. with trying to monetize uh, monetize AI. Mm -hmm. And what I've found is that most of them are selling, are selling, you know, prompts at that point, right? They're giving you an interface that has a system message that's built into it that you don't know what it is. And, mm -hmm. and they're, they're having it generate stuff. And I have not found a uh, one that I really want to use yet. I'd rather make my own that knows me. Mm -hmm. Yeah. That's a good point. Uh, because of, oh, go sorry. ahead. Go ahead, Pete. No, no, I was thinking because it, it, when we are only using prompts, we always can replicate this thing, right? But when you put your 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 knowledge there, and then it's it become it become different. If you put your process, yeah. I I saw a friend creating a, a, a one of these builders that calls Jarvis. They, he called Jarvis. I saw that many out there currently with this name. Oh, man, but he called Jarvis. But yeah, but why? Because he was he he was giving this 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 ChatGPT a uh, a way to talk to his code, so he can they say okay. Take a look at this code and and see and give me what what you know. So he he he. He teaches the code to navigate in the files, navigate using Git, and then just use it the 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 info they already know about the code. So okay, and then when he start doing the stuff, he start sending com commands to the to the the prompt and say, oh, let's see this. And he starts opening the files, looking the cats, doing cats, you know, ba 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 ba, and then you can say, oh. Okay, this code does this, 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 and that, da, 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 da. 
And then he started creating some a, a way to talk to this and make it work for for him. So that that's the idea. That's his idea. So okay, create that class. Do do that. There. Create a test class. Run the tests. See if the test passes. Oh, the test is not passing. Fix it. And then it fixes it. You know because he has a way to to look at the code. He has a way to change the code. He has a way to push the code the, the code to the Git. And then you said, okay. When you look at the code, man, it's like no no more than fifty lines. Yeah, no more than fifty lines to do this thing. So so now the conclusion. There's a GitHub. So now the conclusion is, we are starting to use AI to create AI side projects. <laughs> oh yeah, very <laughs> meta. Very meta. <laughs> very meta. <laughs> Well, yeah. uh, <laughs> I just see the message from George Savardi. So said, instead of out of the box, I am out of time. And 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 Georgie, you are you are not alone. <laughs> I I believe that everyone here had this challenge, this issue, and and yeah, at least wrapping up uh, all we are saying here, we have some some tools in our hand that can actually uh, help us. Uh, and and to make some a bit more effective our day to day or uh, to start any any new project, right? Not that solves everything, but at least make us more effective on starting discussing it and and trying to put out from the from the from our head. It is uh, I, I think it, it, it is exactly what copilot mean, right? Uh, it is it is helping us. It is copiloting us. Uh, it is an assistant that can help us uh, on our day-to-day -day challenges, and at, at least for me, uh, we, we are seeing a lot of things that is releasing all the time, and more and more becoming better and better. Like like Douglas said about Gemini, uh, I, I haven't tried Gemini yet. Uh, I, I, I've been using GPT-4 and Perplexity only. Like like to have some experience. Put my hands on that too. <laughs> but yeah, uh, uh, makes sense uh, for 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 you, Georgie. I think uh, it, uh, I don't know if in the future uh, actually we have now. Now we are close to reach one hour. But uh, uh, last last question here, maybe uh, in the future. Uh, what what we're gonna be? Uh, what we can expect on with these evolutions? Well, <laughs> I, 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 surprise! I'm gonna talk. Um, uh, so basically, uh, I think that in the near term, things are kind of kind of be gradual right now. Um, we're, we're going to have a lot of software engineers sitting around trying to experiment with what they can do. You're going to have a lot of marketers, a lot of salespeople experimenting with what they can do with AI. Um, it's it's going to be a lot of experimentation, right? Um, as time goes on, one of the things that, that I can see or that I see happening, people may disagree with me, and I think that they do, is that we may get to a point as software engineers where there may not be as many software engineering jobs because of what we're talking about right now. You can take a, you can take a chat GPT and you can uh, help it help accelerate you as a senior engineer. Well, that means that companies are going to see that too at some point. Corporations are going to see that too. So one senior engineer might get four or five different instances of a chat GPT to start throwing questions at it, you know, five or 10 at a time, you know, to start having things happen. And you could, you could see that uh, happening at some point. That means that if there's fewer corporate software engineering jobs, what I see in the future is that people who know how to create are going to probably have to go out and start creating on their own and not have that safety net of a W2 position forever. They're going to have to make a really cool thing or they're going to have to make something that people will pay money for and go that route. A more entrepreneurial or ideas economy is what I think is is ahead. Now, not tomorrow, not next year, probably not for five years. Some people have said 10 years, but 
I'm per- personally, the reason why I'm doing the things I'm doing, the experimentation that I'm doing is I'm getting ready for that future where I'm going to need to have the idea out there of my own and I'm going to sell it directly to people. They're going to buy it from me instead of working for a company that pays me. And 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 you have a book that discuss exactly this topic, right, uh, Douglas? Well, it's it's a discussion on on like keeping up with this kind of stuff, right? So, mm-hmm. you know, future proofing your your, you know, tech career. And this is actually really what it comes down to is always keeping that finger on the pulse and being able to go out and 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 see stuff like what I'm seeing right now. Now I can paste a link in here. You'll have to share it because I don't have the ability to share links. So someone uh, I think I have will have to here. send that send that link out across the the channels. But this is actually a link to download that book that I'm talking about. And I guess if, uh, well, if anyone wants to talk to me, that that link will also, after you, you fill out your information, will take you to a page where you can actually schedule a call with me on my calendar. So there's not... You know, there's not like tons and tons of spots, but there's there are spots out there so you can, you know, talk to me about what I see about this and maybe even how to get ready for it. Mm-hmm. Yeah, sure your book is in the in, in low hanging book as well, dot com, right? It is absolutely. So this is a direct link to mine, but you can absolutely go uh to, to low hanging book. It's just mine it's at the way bottom of the list. So if we want to send people to the book, it's uh, right there. We, we we can create that anchor. Okay. So, uh, if you are interested on the book, I totally recommend it to uh, uh, to, put, to subscribe and and put your uh, schedule and, and and conversation with Douglas. It is it is a really interesting topic, right? To be discussing uh, because it is about future, about uh, things that is changing on our on our our reality, and I'm also. Mm-hmm. <laughs> excited to see how, how we're going to be in a few in the few years uh, not 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 maybe in the few months <laughs> it will change a lot so yeah, yeah. so uh, uh, we are reaching uh, at the end of our uh live time and our session and uh do do you have any last words where regarding to this uh to the topic today Well, I my, yield the floor to everybody else. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> <laughs> no, I would say that in my opinion, uh, even if you don't, if you, if you are not working on AI projects directly, like coding, uh, we can use these tools or know how to use or understand how to use them, right? And to to not to to not be like. Uh, 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 I don't know. Uh, to not not be stay behind, uh, because when we and of course because these these tools can help our our productivity at in the minimal, right? It helps us in the minimal. We can improve our, your productivity. So it's important to know everything you you are doing today that can be can use AI to improve your productivity. We need to do. This is important, right? And of course, if you can start to doing a project and using AI, it's much better because then you're gonna learn lots of other stuff, lots of uh, 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 inside information in AI, right? So yeah, uh, uh, but even if you don't, or I, I, I'm not, I don't have time, Pedro, to do this. I, I don't have time to create a new side project in AI. Sure, no problem. At least use it. <laughs> use it to improve your productivity. The better name. Use it and become use it to be to use it, right? Yeah. Are you learning? Practice using it. Cool. Awesome. Tiago, do, do you want to say something in the last? Yes, I can say something. I think in the past we we are usually we say that every day there is a new JavaScript framework. <laughs> now I think every day it's a new AI tool. So, That's every old. so true. Just, okay. just, just one? Really? Yes, yes. <laughs> Probably much more than one. So this is why we need to keep updated with that because like they said, these AI tools can at least 
help us to increase our productivity. So, yeah. And, and never mind. And don't mind the the stack that you are. It it increases uh, in very, many other ways, not just your language stack, right? <laughs> Technology yes, stack. All right. Documentation and many more other things. We didn't talk here, but probably many of us use Grammarly. And mm. there are some tools that we are around use it to it, and we only don't you think realize. more about it. Yeah. Mm -hmm. <laughs> and probably this will be the future. And Chila, how about you? Do you, do you want to <laughs> say something? <laughs> Yes, I think uh, one important point what you mentioned is uh, with productivity and using AI tools for, for stuff you, you don't like uh, to do, like a documentation or maybe refactoring code and things like that. So you can split up your work and see how, you're, um, how you can organize your work where you are using your brain or you are relying on on some some ai tool uh, knowledge and you need to learn to combine all this together so experiment with it and probably you don't have a only one new ai tool one day so on um, every hour there is something new that is coming out and you just cannot keep up with all that, uh, all that speed, maybe that's uh, that's going to be difficult. But trying to choose the right tool for you. Cool. Yeah, that's true. And and and, uh, and you, Douglas, do you want to? You know, I, I I guess again, basically, it it does come down to this is something you have to pay attention to as a software engineer. The saying out there, which came very early, I don't know who to attribute it to, but it's not that, that the GPT is going to take your job. The AI isn't going to take your job, but the person who learns how to wield that AI to accelerate what they're doing, they're coming. And that's the thing that you have to prepare for. And it may even come down to the fact that you're going to have to wield that AI to create your own company at some point to be able to stay afloat. So I, like I said, it sounds like I'm, I'm screaming the sky is falling like Chicken Little would say, but it's just going to be different kind of work. It's going to be a different kind of work and you still have to have that engineering mind in order to do it. That part hasn't been replaced yet. My daughter loves, love it, Chicken Little. <laughs> <laughs> uh, when she was a small age, uh, we had uh, we saw Chicken Little like hundreds of times. <laughs> and, yeah, yeah. <laughs> Completely you know, I think you're stuck. Oh, <laughs> and, nice he, 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 <laughs> and he's talking at a really that's really a really good funny. one. Is <laughs> well. I don't know if something happened with his internet, yeah. but we are in the end of our time currently. Mm -hmm. That's so right. Do we, uh, uh, it, I, I think we we have shared all the, all the information we're talking today. We shared lots of links. It's all here. And uh, I think we can uh, uh, say thanks to everybody who listened to us here today. And we uh, we had uh, uh, we had Aisha and enter here, Ayrton, Ideal, Jorge, Manuel, Dan. So everybody who was was here and didn't didn't send a comment. The next time you can you can send a comment, okay? Can comment here and then you can like have a a, a great talk together. All right. Mm -hmm. So. Thank you, everybody. Okay. Thank you all. Thank you all. Thank you. Thanks. Thank you.